Ladies and gentlemen, I am talking with author uh, Damien Vargas um, about his new book. Damien, how are you? I'm very good. Thank you very much. Good, good. Now, you've, you've written a book which is based around the Costa del Sol, um, which I, I guess a lot of people have done that in their time. But this one's a bit of a, a, bit of a thriller. Is that the right way of putting it? I'd call it an action thriller, for sure, yes. Um, what got you involved in writing in the first place? What what made you want to pick up a, <laughs> a pen, a typewriter, a laptop, and start bashing out stories? <laughs> um, well, I can honestly say, whilst I probably had a, writing a book down on a, on a kind of life bucket list, it wasn't that big a goal up until probably about 18 months ago I am um, I was in a job where I was traveling spending half my time in Gibraltar half my time in Berlin so I had a lot of time on my hands um, and it, it was one weekend I was in Berlin um, fabulous city that it is I you know there's, there's only so many times you can kind of wander around um, and and I was, I was sitting there in my Airbnb and this this idea for a, a scene came to mind um, based based down here um, I wasn't really thinking about writing a book at all at that point. It was just this kind of uh, this, this notion, this idea that came to me, and I kind of, I kind of hacked it out, um, saved it, didn't really think much about it um, for, for a couple more weeks until I was back in Berlin the, the following month. Um, then, uh, a, a, again, I, 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 another idea of another scene, at the time seemingly unrelated, um, popped into my mind. Um, I wrote that one down too. Um, and, and it was, I guess, over the kind of weeks that followed, this this uh, this kind of overarching kind of story theme began to kind of pickle in my brain. Um, and then probably around Christmas last year, um, the the notion of actually writing a book um, kind of formulated, and I decided to commit to it. But I, I guess the, uh, the, 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 the the stimulation was basically all the crazy things that go on in this part of the world. <laughs> and there's a heck of a lot of those. <laughs> Do you find it easy? to write do, do you have to be in a certain situation do you have to be in a a certain place or, or do you just find that you know ideas come to you and that's it you've got to get them down um i think cre creating stories is is something that's always become very natural to me i mean I, i'm a bit of a dreamer um you know, I, I, <laughs> I be driving down the road if I'm bored. It, yeah, kind of. I, I literally going to come up with with kind of uh, stories. Um, maybe maybe subconsciously. Um, I'd never actually written a, a book. I've written a lot in my lifetime, but never a, a fictional book. Um, but I, I, I find. I guess it depends on the mood. Um, yeah, you know, I could be walking around up in the hills with my dog, and just ideas are just springing to mind. You know, and I'm having to kind of record them then and there, and, and then scribe them down later. Um, other times, it's it, it's harder. Um, it is, and you, you've got it, you need to have the kind of discipline to, to keep um, doing it for sure. Do, do you find that you need tools? You know, like you, you were saying, you sort of basically read it into or, or speak it into some sort of recording device. Do you need those sort of things? And then once you get back to your your where you're going to write it's easy then to sort of translate that into into sort of keyboardy stuff if you know yeah, what i mean, I mean <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely i mean i i, I like i say I, I tend to record things on the fly on my phone if, if, if thoughts suddenly occur i i gen i don't tend to carry a notebook but i will make notes on my phone as well you know great devices that smartphones are um i think but, but yeah in terms of does the story kind of flow naturally and, and or do you have to kind of force it? That, it depends on the mood environment, I guess. Um, you, you, I think you need to be able to, to send yourself off to, to, the, to that fictional world and, you know, see those characters and those scenarios playing out. You have to kind of forget the world about you. And that, it, it, it requires a certain kind of um, uh, frame of mind. It also requires uh, yeah, peace and quiet around you, for sure. Now, do you write in, in the basis, because I know a lot of people, a lot of people write in that the story goes you know, chapter one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Other people write chapter one, six, five, seven, <laughs> because they get that image and they think, oh, yeah, I've got, that's going to happen later in the story. How do you write? Yeah, there's, there's, there's two answers to that. Now, <laughs> I'm, I'm very much what, what you would call a plotter. Um, you know, so I, I kind of think of a, of a story premise. I'm, I'm putting together a, a whole, I'm plotting out a whole book. So you, I might end up with maybe 10, 15 pages in, in Word that is uh, in linear flow where I'm thinking about the overarching um, story um, arc, the character arcs, you know, the kind of, the kind of three um, 
back structure, all that kind of good stuff. That's utterly not how I started with the first book. It was these kind of random scenes as, as I described. Hmm. Um, and just kind of letting the, the kind of story flow and the characters flow. Yeah, and, and, and some authors can do that and can be very successful. Stephen King is very famous for being a pantser, you know, kind of writing by the seat of his pants. But I don't think for, for most people, for us, you know, mere mortals, that's that's a technique that works. I think it's very wasteful. I think you can easily write 50,000 words and realize that, you know, that they're worthless. So... Yeah, the, the first book, the production probably took it uh, over 14 months. You know, there's probably six, seven months of kind of hard writing. But I, th- I like to think now, having learned what I've learned from doing that and adopted a more kind of structured approach, I could probably be right. Yeah, you know, an even better book in in least half the time. Okay, now characters. Now, I'm, I'm always fascinated by characters in books because some people give tremendous <laughs> descriptive um, characters. Other people just give you a glimpse of what they're like and let <laughs> you make up your own mind. How do you find your characters? Are they based on people you know, or do you take little elements of somebody you saw on telly or something? How, how do you create them? Uh, it's, it's a mixed bag, to be honest. Um, I guess there are some character traits uh, that are for sure based on people that I, I know have met, or, or maybe the characters you, you see in the media, for example. Um, others, they, 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 I guess they kind of evolve you, know, you obviously need a protagonist, antagonist, and the kind of various um, mixes of people around those. You know, formulaically, you need those for, mm. for the story structure. Um, but then they, they, I guess you get to know them. You know, they, they are people in their heads, um, in, your, in your head as an author. Um, but I, I use things like um, Pinterest to create boards of images of, of perhaps actors that help me kind of envisage, envisage those, um, those, those characters. And then I, I, I come up with story backgrounds for them. So, so I know them as people then. Um, and, and then you can speak for them. You, you kind of you know, know how they react to, under certain situations. And then they, 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 it sounds corny, but they, 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 they kind of act out in your head and you're just recording events as fast as you can. <laughs> funny enough, you, it's funny you should say that because there is an author that, that I have talked with a few times and she says that she sort of creates a character and then lets them go and just yeah. follows them and writes down what they do. I, you know, <laughs> to, yeah. to yeah. somebody who's not an author, that's sort of, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it sounds uh, yeah, psychologically worrying, <laughs> I guess. But, but I, th- I think that, there's, that very much is the case. Um, like you, you kind of have to kind of slightly put yourself into some kind of trance-like um, state where you're semi in control of events but but also literally watching these these events kind of um play out in front of you um and, and yeah i know i know, ex- I know exactly what, what your, your your friend's referring to you know you these you're going to create the uh, the dna of these characters you create the scenarios the premises you drop them in it and you see what happens <laughs> yeah it's, it's as though they're writing the script for you yeah yeah <laughs> so when you're writing um do you have any premise in mind? Is is the you know it's going to be a book or it's going to be a movie or it could be a TV series? Do you write with that in mind or just write? You know, it just happens. <laughs> okay, yes, yeah, so I, I guess that you would describe the books that I'm writing as kind of fast-paced action thrillers. So, yeah, that they they have strong um, characters in there and they have fairly complex plots that the that readers probably won't see coming. Um, but I, I'm I'm trying to create. Uh, books that are very consumable um yeah i describe it as the perfect kind of beach holiday read um and i think to that extent they, they have a lot of similarities with certain movies um yeah, i'm thinking all kind of um guy Ritchie's movies the tarantino mm. type films um so yeah in my, in my mind i see them seem as, as movies um for sure yeah yeah the new book six hard days mm-hmm. in andalusia <laughs> uh, just just give us the brief outline i don't want the story just sure. the briefest sure. outline of what it's all about uh, okay so i so say it's, uh, it's an action thriller set here in casa del sol um i, I guess you could describe it as, it's uh, uh, the intertwining lives of a, of a pretty diverse mix of people and they include um a woman who i call the accountant um she's an ex mi6 field agent uh, but now working for some, some shady organized crime groups there's uh, an old-time kind of British gangster who's been here since the 80s. Um, obviously, uh, people will resonate with that. <laughs> and and he's, he's, he's seen a lot, done a lot, and is basically he's seeking redemption. Um, and then there's this kind of horde of devious, manipulating, various violent characters, including a, a very powerful and, and corrupt local mayor. Um, and then to cap it off, there's uh, an unfortunate English tourist who gets caught up in the middle of the whole bloody mess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> now, how much research do you have to do for a book like Six Days? 
Um, well, I've, I chose to base it very locally to me. So um, your, your Siesta Pona, Manilva, Sabinias, Casares, um, there's references to Gibraltar. So you know, I, I, I've, been, I've lived in this area for about three years, so I know it very well. Um, so to that extent, uh, not too much. I was able to describe the area, I hope, you know, in, in kind of rich, um, in a rich manner, um, naturally. Um, but then other things, for example, I've ever seen in, in Berlin. Um, so there are fact checks that you have to have to be that, that have to be done. Um, small things, just like um, uh, kind of uh, manufacturers of, of weapons and ammunition mm. and uh, certain technological um, uh, topics. I mean, I, I, as my day job, I work in a, in a technology field, but you know, you, you want to make sure you get these facts right. Um, and I can tell you, when I engaged an editor, he he, he spotted things that needed to be verified. Um, kind of linguistic um, references. I have some some Spanish in there. Um, yeah, and, and yeah, I mean, I, I thought I had researched it quite heavily, but uh, when when a third party starts reading it and they start saying, "Oh, is this, is this right? Are you sure about this?" and you look it up and oh, actually, no. <laughs> you know, so yes, I think that the short answer is quite a lot. <laughs> that 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 actually brought me to another point. When you give your book over to somebody, mm-hmm. either a proofreader or an editor or whatever you want to call them, and they go away, is it is it like they're taking your baby? <laughs> uh, 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 yes to a certain extent i mean my first experience with that was literally handing it to my wife um she's uh, an extremely avid reader i mean she, she can easily consume a novel in a day if she wants to um and she's also very very plain speaking so she she wasn't going to kind of um hide uh, her, her thoughts so that, that was my first experience kind of keeping it in the family but still <laughs> uh, letting someone else see it um I shared it with a few friends as well, a few colleagues, and they, they gave me some, some candid feedback as well. Um, but yeah, when I first handed it to, to, to my editor, who um, it, I mean, I initially I wanted to do a line and edit copy, but he, he ended up being a pretty much full development edit as well. Um, and, and it's 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 it's, it's a trust thing. You know, you, you, I think as an author, you you're putting thousands of hours into these things. You know, there's no point in doing that endeavor unless you want to create the best possible product. And it is a product at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that, that's a, a team, a team effort. It, it really is. You know, as an author, you are, you have certain strengths and, and, but some of those, are, it's really hard to edit your own book. It really is. Um, so yeah. So when I handed it over, it, it came back and, and a huge amount of comments um, and pretty much all of them valid. Um, yeah, which is, is not, as, as an author for me, it's oh my, you know, it, it's a question of my my expertise. Perhaps I'm not good at this, but then you speak to any other um, authors, and no, it's 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 just the norm. It's it's part of the process. Yeah. Yeah. When when you you start to write, this is something mm-hmm. I've asked a couple of, of authors, and I'm not going to tell you what their answers have been. Do you start with an end and a beginning, and then pack out the middle, or do you start with just a little section and build a story around it? Um, I would say now um, I'm more, far more inclined to do the former. Um, so oh, oh, I, I need to have a, a, a kind of barnstormer of an opening. You need that hook. Yep. Um, we are we are competing with with other not just other books but other forms of entertainment. So you've you've got a, a small moment of opportunity to grab the um, the reader's attention. So that that's mandatory. Um, and I think it, it's very hard to to plot out a story unless you have some semblance of idea of how it's going to end. Now, you don't need to the, the gory detail necessarily um but i think you need to know where you're heading um and what will probably change is the journey towards that heading um so that that's that's how i am approaching things now as i said earlier it, it's actually not what i did with the first book it, yeah and that's probably be why it was so hard and took so long right okay <laughs> now six hard days in andalusia an action thriller it says on my piece of paper here in front of me um where is it available um, currently, it's available exclusively through Amazon, um, so you can order it as an ebook or for, for Kindle or for, for the Kindle app on any smartphone and tablet, or f- as a paperback, also via um, Amazon. I'm, I've had a f- quite a few requests from from people locally saying, "Can we get hold of the paperback locally?" Um, so I'm I'm going to look into seeing whether I can um, identify a few bookshops and maybe, maybe uh, see approach them about um, holding some stock. Oh, okay. so, so we'll see how that goes. Now, th- this program actually goes out in the UK as well. So somebody from the UK, um, obviously, they can get it through Amazon. But could they get directly in touch with you and maybe, you know, sort out some way of getting it from you there? Um, very possibly, yeah. If, if there's enough people that are interested in it, then for sure, we'll find a way. Okay. All right, Damien. Thank you so much for your time. I've got to wish you all the best with the book. And uh, hopefully we'll chat again when you've got five or six more books under your belt. 
Okay, well, give me a couple of years and we'll see, see how, how we get on. Thank you very much. <laughs> Damien Vargas, thank you very much for talking with me. Take care. Bye-bye.